So the show that everyone's been waiting for, at least I hope you've been waiting for it. Part of this will go out on TikTok and the rest will, of course, be on YouTube. Perhaps, well, I'm hoping the TikTok people will go to YouTube because we're going to be talking about Gaza and the three missions that I was able to go on to while I was in Jordan. Um, I have heard that there were people in Egypt that were, have, have been trying to help people in Gaza, and they weren't able to actually do that. But um, Cairo is is quite a ways. It's, it's basically de the Sinai Desert um, to get to the Philadelphia Corridor. And so you're going through that whole desert area, and then Israel's right there. Um, so I could see where that might be a little more difficult. And then people were telling me to get a hold of, um, I should have had their name ready. Um, let me see. Let me see if I can get on TikTok without it um, blasting. It, it always blasts things I don't want to blast. Oh, am I getting probably getting Mormon TikTok now? I think I was watching that the other night. Um, let's see here. This isn't going to show it. It's not going to show what I bought, is it? Um, I don't know what the, this would really look like. Okay. Um, yeah, maybe. Nope. Um, I want to say wolf. Maybe I'll add it in there later is what I'll do. And so I had reached out to him and I had already been in Gaza or in Jordan for a couple of days before he, he got back to me. And, um, I asked him what he needed, the tangibles of what he needed. And what I was told was money. And I, I don't do that. I, I, I won't give um, money to people that I don't know. I will give them to an actual organization, UNICEF, UNWAR, et cetera, et cetera, but not to just someone on TikTok. I don't make that a practice because, um, yeah, I, I, a lot of, a lot of people like me don't do that. Excuse the room behind me. Um, before we left, uh, for, for Paris, um, my husband dumped the other room in here. So we had a guest room for our, our cat sitter who never slept in there anyways. Anyways, I digress. So once I got there, I kept bugging and bugging and bugging and bugging and bugging people. Um, finally, it got to the point where I was like, um, I have a husband who was killed overseas who is a Green Beret. So I contacted a contact, and the contact meant going to um, the, um, I believe it's called the Sea of Aqaba, uh, the Red Sea, uh, the Gulf of Aqaba. And, um, and I just happened to be down there. So it worked out really well. And I had five crates of, um, medicine that I was able to get to them. It was an extremely quick trip and it was at night. So I, I heard, I heard bombing. Um, I heard drones continuously um i am conditioned probably like they are well maybe not as much to know what that sounds like um because i've lived on military installations for quite some time even even where i live here it'll drive my husband crazy because i'm like what is that 
that that is not a regular plane because we live in the flight path. And he's like, I've lived here for 25 years. I know every kind of plane. And I'm like, no, that's a, that's a fighter jet. That's not a regular plane. And he'll insist that it is, and then we'll find out it's not. Um, so I, I, I can tell what is what. Um, and it's harrowing because it, all you hear are drones constantly, 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 constantly. And it's just psychological warfare is what it comes down to. It's, well, we can blow you up at any time we feel like it. All we have to do is push this button and this drone's going to kill you. Uh, and my husband went through SEER school, which for those who aren't military, don't know this. Um, G.I. Jane, there was a, a little part in there where she goes through SEER school. And my husband actually went through the Air Force one because he... Um, was ASOT. He was Advanced Special Operations Trained, which bas basically meant that he worked with the CIA in retaining and recruiting informants. Now you see, my whole life is coming together. And that was his job. So when he went to Sears School, he went to the Air Force One, which was a little bit different. But he also had to sign that's a, a piece of paper that said they were allowed to break a small bone if he went through the school. And they were allowed to kidnap him at any time. So he flew from Germany all the way to Seattle because it was somewhere in Washington State. And I'm from Oregon. He's from Washington. And so we're like, okay, well, have fun. Um, and basically they, they did. They, they kidnapped him. They threw him in a cell. They um, uh, took all his clothes. Um, he was on a concrete cell, and they were throwing water at him all the time, and they were blasting music constantly. Um, and he said that went on for like three or four days, and he, uh, the one good thing about him was that he can compartmentalize, so he'll just start thinking about something else and it'll go away. And that's part of the reason our marriage fell apart because he yeah, started thinking about something else and everything else would just kind of go away, right? Um, so for me, part of the reason that I have done humanitarian things is that it's it's not the same for me as it is for other people or, or most other people. I will not necessarily um, be frightened easily, be startled easily, uh, get upset easily. There have been some things, obviously, throughout the war that have upset me. Um, and it, it, you, you, just being human is going to upset you. But listening to drones over and over and over again, when you're trying to get this to particular people, to a particular person, to try and get it to a particular area, you know that you have to do this. And really, what is the other option? 
if they're going to kill you, they're going to kill you. Now, my grandmother, who I love dearly, used to tell me that when your time comes, your time comes. It doesn't matter where you're at. You're going to die. So basically, I could be in Gaza or I could be at home with my cats. And it didn't matter if it was my turn to die, it was my turn to die. I still struggle with that concept, but it's made it easier for me to fly. Um, so I was able to get this medication there, but it was just a drop in the bucket. As you noticed, we're coming up on the year mark and there's a presidential election that's happening. And if you go on TikTok, there's hardly anyone talking about this on TikTok anymore. And it's just a psychological phenomenon where people just get battle weary and they just decide I'm you know I, I can't do this anymore and the problem is is that then it really ramps up it, it really ramps up and it allows them to continue to do what they're going to do so anyways, I I got the medication. Again, it was a drop in the bucket. I was able to get out easily um, and by boat in, into Aqaba. And um, then I started making my way out because... If I wasn't going to be able to do any aid work, then I was going to sightsee. Um, and so what I found is I was able to sightsee in between bullying aid people into letting me help. Because... I would say I'm a blonde-haired, blue-eyed Westerner that doesn't give a fuck. You can strap me onto the front of the truck and plow your way through, and I don't care. I just do not care. I'll, I'll, I'll get it through. They're not. They, they're. Trust me, I'll get it. I mean, I've got military stories where there are military generals that are afraid of me. There, it, it, and there's military lieutenants and captains that are afraid of me. They were afraid of me when I was married to my husband. So, do you think these people, they might think they can get away with this, but it all comes back down to psychological warfare. And who has a PhD in psychology? Well, that would be me. So, I bullied my way onto an eight truck. Now, the only thing I can't I can't do is I can't say which aid agency because um I bullied my way onto them <laughs> and and so I didn't go through proper channels to be able to get through to them. And two, um the Israelis said that I could bring my laptop and my recording equipment and my phone with me and that I could record while I was there. And um, on the way out, they asked to look at my computer and then took the butt of their gun and went like this. 
So, um, yeah, I came back without a computer. And I had things to do uh, at the UN, and I had a seminar that I was going through. So, uh, needless to say, it took somebody to hold me back so I didn't punch him. And I'm not really a violent person, but after what I had gone through on the second one, it's, yeah, yeah, because the second one was early in the morning, or relatively early in the morning. And there had just been an airstrike. And they were, where we were at, they were still trying to get people out from under the rubble. And it's children that they're getting out from under the rubble. And um, while I was there, albeit, I don't think that Hamas has a standard military uniform. They might. I didn't see any man with a gun, except for Israelites or Israelis or whatever the fuck they want to call themselves, IOF. Israeli Occupation Forces. So, I, I hear that they're undergoing intense fire in some areas. They weren't where I was. There was a refugee camp of makeshift tents that they were trying to patch together with children that were starving. And you could tell they they couldn't, they didn't even, so we can't get them soap. We can't get them water. We can't tell the Israelis that they need to turn the fucking water back on and quit bombing their desalination plants. We can't do that. Why can't we do that? Please explain that to me. Why can't we do that? I mean, big picture question. Now, this is what it comes down to. We have always been a Democrat. I I have always been a Democrat. I worked on Joe's campaign. Okay? I, I worked on it. I don't like Kamala. I don't like her. And this is what's killing me, is that I have no choice but to vote for her. Because Trump is so much worse. It is so bad. He's so, so bad. But Kamala is just so bad. So we have Kamala who's so bad, or we have Trump that is so, 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 so bad. Kamala's married to a Zionist. You know, that so she's pretty much kept him out of the picture. They don't talk about him. They don't talk to her about him. There's a reason for that. And it has to stop. It just, it just has to. Because me trying to get I shouldn't say me trying to get, me trying to help people get their dead children out from underneath buildings that were blown. They aren't even fucking buildings. 
they keep saying that 90% of Gaza has been destroyed. I don't know where that 10% is at. I mean, is, is, is that 10% is just kind of mangled building? It's not like 10% you could really live in. The, 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 the Israelis have purposely bombed everything that they can in Gaza so no one can live there. That's against the Geneva Conventions. We're still giving them bombs. No, it's a what they're doing is against the Geneva Conventions, and the UN has said so. We have decided not to listen to the highest court in the land, the court that we backed that said we should have this court. We should have this agency. We should have this for the entire world. We listen to it when it comes to Ukraine. But we can't listen to it when it comes to Palestinians. And let's talk about the West Bank. There was just an American woman that was shot there the other day. And, you know, what? what is our standard response? Well, I... We are asking the Israelis to look into it because the Israelis are so trustworthy, aren't we? Aren't they? That would be like me asking my two year old, Where did the cookies go? And could you look into where those cookies went to? What do you think she's going to say? I don't know, Mommy. They they just, they were in, I don't know. And she's going to run off and play. That's what they're doing. They're playing with the whole entire world. And I had hoped that Turkey was going to get involved. Done to the point that I was hoping Russia was going to get involved. Because somebody needs to get involved. The third mission that I went on was just as bad. People are starving, so yes, they're trying to get on trucks. They're trying to stop them to get food. I don't blame them. I wasn't afraid of them. They weren't going to hurt you. They wanted the food. They weren't going to eat you. They want food. That's all. There's a great picture, a great scene in Black Hawk Down, where the people in, um, I believe, is it, was it Yemen? No, it's Somalia, where they're trying to get to the food, but the warlords are, aren't letting them because they want to control them. Um, and they're just wanting to get food so they don't starve. Let them think about what would you do? What would you do? Because you know what? I'm a statistician. And so I looked this up and I put it online. And no one seemed to care. Right? So, like, 40%. Of the children in Gaza have been killed. 
So we're going to stick to statistics because the Israelis like to stick to numbers. So they can say, well, six million of us were killed in the Holocaust. But that was just one Holocaust, okay? Because there have been many, many Holocausts. They don't just own that word, the Holocaust, okay? The uh, the World War II Holocaust with the bad people uh, start with the end word, okay? In this Holocaust, I'm going to get flagged for Holocaust. In that other one, twenty five percent were killed, and they weren't indiscriminately killed, although. It is. It does seem to be coming down to race. Forty percent Palestinians, twenty-five percent Jewish. That's fifteen percent more Palestinians that Jewish people are killing. How do they look at themselves in the mirror? They pretend this faux outrage that they're battling to save their lives. No, they need to go home from where they came from. Dudes with American accents. Dude or lady from from Texas that wants all this land. Go home and buy land in Texas. That land's not yours. It was bad. It was so bad, I didn't tell my husband what was going on. Ironically enough, he didn't even ask. He didn't ask. I. I try to tell him I need new shoes to go to the Olympics because, yeah, we went to the Olympics afterwards. We had that planned way before all of this happened. Um, and my kids were going and they had some friends going. And so I needed, I couldn't wear my hiking shoes that I love because they're so comfortable and they're great and because I wore them to Gaza and then they have phosphorus on them and I was afraid that that then they wouldn't let them come with me and I wouldn't have any shoes because we were we were taking one carry-on and a backpack and the kids wheel out you know like one backpack um we took a little bit more so that we could take back souvenirs it basically is what it came down to and um figured we'd buy a bag if we needed to for souvenirs um and he goes why why would you have phosphorus on your shoes and i said um because there's a war going on and Jordan's part of that war. They're shooting down things there too. You know, not understanding why he can't come out and ask. I had to call my son and talk to him. I, I didn't tell him what I was doing, but I tell him, you know, some of the fun things that I did, like, you know, um, the camel. I'll talk about my Jordan stories on another one. But I, yeah, I would tell him some of my fun things. Um, so he could joke around with me and, you know, 
Um, and I, I sent him some videos that I got from my phone and and I made it through that way. I'm tough, but I'm not heartless. I'll go back. This time I'm applying for jobs. I've heard they're virtually impossible to get, which is too bad because I might not be your typical UN person, but with my ex-husband, he taught me everything he knew. He'd go to a school and I'm like, so what'd you do? How'd you do that? What what did you learn? You know, he would basically debrief me on everything. I know everything. Everything that he has ever done. Uh, beyond top secret. He has taught me everything. I can make Prusak handcuffs. You know what I packed with me? 550 cord and, and 100 mile an hour tape. Yes. I am that ha hardcore. Don't think that I can't handle something. He taught me everything. I, I may be old, but I'm not. I'm not. I may have had some battle scars. Didn't keep me down. Nope. I did not go floating in the Dead Sea with them. I want to go back. Really, really bad. I I really need to be there to help as many people as I can. And hopefully it will or I will be able to get there. Even if I have to I guess go over there and bully people to let me go there. It was a little bit easier last time because I was flying to Geneva for seminars and then I was flying to Jordan before that and had a couple of weeks and then flew from Jordan back to Geneva. Um, it's a little more difficult this time, particularly since since then. I, I did spend two weeks in Geneva and then two weeks in, in Paris. but. It's a thousand times worse than what you see. It's a thousand times worse. And to my senators who wouldn't call me back, screw you. And to, what is her name? Got to get this down here. I really shouldn't be taking notes, shouldn't I? Um, but why take notes when I can sit here and look things up in front of all you good people, right? I mean, um, uh, shoot. Um, let me, oh, I'm going to give my, my best. I'm going to go take Arabic lessons next summer in Jordan. Um, until then, I'm going to take French lessons, but I think Arabic lessons, if I'm, 
there, it'll be easier for me because I have a lisp and that makes it hard for me to do some things. Um, Rashida Delay. Delay? Dave? Okay. Yes. I called her and asked her if she would like to know what's going on. And she never called me. Granted, I'm not in her congressional district. I just kind of thought that maybe she might want to know some firsthand information of what's going on. But she didn't. Because when it comes down to it, they really don't care. They say they do, but they really don't care. So, if you found me on YouTube, please mosey on over to my TikTok. I have some more videos and some more musings over there. This YouTube channel I will be breaking up and I will have one on Gaza, one on um, narcissistic mothers. Yeah, I can't wait for that one. Um, one for just general things like the Olympics, uh, one on Oregon football and one on Oregon soccer. Um, because I have them all together. So I, I don't know, you know, I, I'm kind of thinking maybe I should do them separately. But since I have, like, two followers, I mean, hey, if I did them separately, I might have no followers. So, um, maybe as time goes on, I'll think more about what happened in Gaza and um, talk to you about some of the people that I met and their feelings about what happened. And we can go from there. But until next time, send your donations to Anwar. Or the World Health Organization. Okay? They, they can really get get what the people need to them in the proper manner. And if you come on here and knock on war, it's not going to be pretty. Let me just put it to you that way. Because, yeah. I can not be pretty. So until next time. Salam and make them. And make them salam. Bye.